This meeting of the Star for Board of Aldermen will come to order. Please rise for the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, to be followed immediately by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> You have before you a copy of the modified written agenda. Are there any proposed changes to the agenda as written? I've got a few. All right. I'd like to place both sets of minutes on the consent agenda. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place items 4A and 4B on the consent agenda. Those items are as follows. The approval, approval of the minutes from February 5th, 2013 as presented, and the approval of the minutes from February 6, 2013, as presented. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Do I hear any objections? Mayor, any? Um, I would like to have the February 5th minutes pulled off only because I wasn't present at that meeting It was going to abstain. <coughs> All right, so Alderman Dumas, your proposed revision would be to remove the minutes from February 6, 2013, or mm -hmm. to to place February 6, 2013 minutes as presented on the consent agenda. Is that correct? Correct. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. All I'm going to do is you have further proposed revisions. I do. Under community development, I'd like to place item uh, B1A on consent. And I think Ms. Sister I've had a few comments to make about that. Hang on. Yes, um, that is a four-way stop sign at the intersection of Russell Street and Fellowship Street. There was some study done um, a year or so ago, maybe a little bit over a year ago, to see if that intersection warranted a, a traffic light, and it did not rise to the level of requiring a traffic light, but it does meet the criteria based on a series of accidents that have occur occurred there over the years for a four-way stop <coughs> sign. So we will be installing a four-way stop sign. Um, the schedule that we used last time when we installed a three-way stop on University Drive worked out really well, which was to do it um, late May, early June when traffic counts are down a bit, but still give people a chance to adjust before school is back in session. Okay, the proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place the approval of the installation of a four-way stop mm -hmm. sign at the intersection of Russell Street and Fellowship Street as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, that's your proposed revision? It is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, do you have further proposed revision? I do. Under engineering, I've got a, um, a question for Edward on the box culvert that, that uh, Pritchard is, is looking at putting at, at Old West Point Road. I see your communication in here. Is there anything else we need to do on that, considering we're not wanting a box culvert, we're wanting the, the, the bridge? Well, I, I've talked with the county administrator um, that with him, and we're going to have an associate meeting with the uh, representative of state aid. Okay. Um, All right, so with approval. Uh, uh, I don't obviously want to change their normal process, uh, but I think that we can do something around. Okay. But approval tonight is still needed on that moving forward, so you can do what you need to do. Okay. All right, I'd like to place B1B on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place item 11, B1B, the approval of an interlocal agreement with Octavia Hall County for the repair of the bridge located at Old West Point Road near the Garrard Road intersection as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, that's your proposed revision? It is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, you have further proposed revision? I do. Under planning, the only item left, the um, consideration of CU 13-02, I'd like that on consent with the six conditions as presented. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place the approval of item uh, P and Z item CU 13-02 uh, as presented with the six conditions as recommended by the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Do it's you have an objection? It's 2A, you have? Okay. Yes. Yeah, 2A. Ms. Brewer? Yes, sir. I'll explain 2A to us, please. 
It's 2A. You're planning to vision by the request of this. On, on, um, no, I want that on the consent. Let's hold that one off the consent. Okay, that'll remain on the regular agenda. Mm -hmm. All of them, if you have further proposed revision. I do. Under finance and administration, I'd like to place E5 on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place item 11E5, the approval of the contract for the lease purchase financing for police cars as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Mm -hmm. Any objection? Any objection saying none of that matter has been placed on the consent agenda? Alderman Dumas, do you have further proposed Under personnel, revision? both items on consent, please. Under what? Personnel. personnel. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place items 11H1 and 11H2 on the consent agenda. Those are the authorization for advertisement to fill the vacant position of deputy clerk in finance and administration as presented and the authorization to advertise to fill the vacant position of service technician in the electric department as presented both on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, that's your proposed revision? Yes. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, those matters have been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, do you have further proposed revisions? I do not. Alderman Vaughn. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Ms. Brewer, I'll speak to you a minute about this. Um, that plan at 2A. Did you talk to Miss uh, Daniels this evening? I'm sorry, could I do one? Did you talk to Miss Pamela Daniels this yes, evening? Yes, sir, I did. And, okay, and explain that one to us. Yes, the, I, you know, I left the picture there in front of you of a modular home as opposed to a mobile home. Okay. There. Um, and this gentleman is going to build a home or he's going to do a modular home. It will not be a mobile home. And there, okay. is, there is a difference in the definition. So. All right. Okay. So, that was that was your question? Right. right. So we're going to reduce that in the writing but saying that make sure no mobile home yes, it will be a modular home or single family home yes okay we can move that to the consent gentlemen. all right alderman vaughn has proposed revising the agenda to move item 11 to a the approval of item cu 13-02 a request by mr and mrs james vernon to allow a manufactured home to be placed in an r5 zoning district located at 343 north long street in Ward 7, as presented with the six conditions as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Hold on one second. Also noting that this is to this this is not to be approval for a mobile home on the consent agenda. All right, and prior to hearing from the board, the city attorney has some comments he'd like to make. Just want to add, and a finding of fact as stated in the staff report as substance for the conditional use. Correct. All right, uh, so at the Alderman Ball on the finding of fact uh, uh, as to the substance for the conditional use as stated in the staff report will also be included in the item on the consent agenda. Is that correct? All right, do I hear any objections? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Further proposed revisions? Alderman Carper. I guess I got a housekeeping matter on under board business, item C. I don't mind if it stays on consent, but that was a, it's a race that this, the Central Neighborhood Foundation does every year. And is there any, is there any kind of law or anything against, I know they mark the streets, I had a lot of people complain about the streets getting marked, you know, on a public right of way. You remember the areas that stayed? <coughs> is that something that they, they've said they've got the adequate personnel? Is that something we need to address or is that? Were they, what were they marked with? Uh, some kind of spray paint. So it wasn't chalk? No. Yeah, I think it was a spray paint. I think we've already talked about that, haven't we, Edward? Um, I can let them know that that's a concern and see. Yeah, we can we can even make that a, a, an item. Would you like to add it to the item yeah, on the consent I'd like agenda? Just, I'd modify it just to not include street marking device. Okay. Any, do you want to make it a permanent mark, or do you want to include chalk as well? Chalk of anything that would disappear within a week is fine with me. All right, so the matter, uh, the proposed revision from Alderman Carver is for item 10C to remain on the consent agenda as is with the following uh, addition. Uh, that uh, it is to be conditioned upon 
no uh, uh, markings to be made uh, with, with a permanent substance on the street. Alderman Carver, is that your proposed revision? Yes. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been so revised. Alderman Sistro? I think so. Um, if, if there's no objection, um, item XE, uh, the consideration to approve a proposal review committee. Um, the blanks that are in there to, are to name Alderman, and, and I know I expressed an interest in serving on that committee, and Alderman Dumas did um, in emails that I saw. Were there other Aldermen who wished to be on that committee? I think Alderman Corey, with that being his district, would be a good Alderman Corey. Well, then um, I, I would like to move that in, filling in the blank, naming Alderman uh, Jeremiah Dumas, Richard Corey, and Sandra Sistrunk. All right. Alderman Sistrunk has proposed revising the agenda to place item 10E, the approval of the proposed review committee consisting of Mayor Parker Wiseman, Alderman Sandra Sistrunk, Alderman Jeremiah Dumas, and Alderman Richard Corey, a Cooley Center LLC representative, and a Mississippi State University representative for the Starkville Cotton Mill Marketplace Development Katrina Supplemental Community Development Block Grant number R-103-347-01-KED dash 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 to review proposals for architectural services and construction man manager otherwise as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Sister, is that your proposed revision? It, it is unless we need to strike language related to the construction manager um, since that's... Oh. No, that was needed to be added. It, it needs yeah. to stay there. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Are there any objections? Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. That agenda item had been struck. Do I have any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda is revised as an order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Corey to approve the agenda as revised. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Sistrock. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. You now have before you the approval of the consent agenda. Is there any objection to the approval of the consent agenda as revised? Any objection to the approval of the consent agenda as revised? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, the consent agenda as revised has been approved. You now have before you the consideration of the approval of the February 5th, 2013 minutes. Discussion. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve of the minutes of the February 5th, 2013 regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville as presented. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Carver. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? I do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. And I abstain. Oh, I got it. Measure passes with six in favor, zero against, and one abstention. All right, that will carry us to comments by the mayor and board. And I have uh, a series of comments tonight. Uh, and uh, those are as follows. Uh, first, I just wanted to make an announcement. Some of you have, have probably noticed that a fence has gone up at the site of the old electric department, which will be the site of the new city hall. Uh, that, that is the beginning of the city hall construction project. Uh, there, there will be a couple of phases in the life of the fence. Uh, for right now, that fence does not change any of the traditional traffic patterns on the street. Uh, that will remain the case through the demolition phase of that project. Uh, once the demolition is complete uh, and it becomes a uh, construction project, the fence will be bumped out to the perimeter of what will ultimately uh, be the site uh, of the building. And uh, that, that means uh, one of the lanes uh, on MIGS uh, will be closed. And of course that lane will remain permanently closed uh, uh, after the project as well. Um, I'd now like to introduce our newest employees, uh, and we have several tonight. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Robert Tomlinson. Robert Tomlinson is our new maintenance technician for the wastewater division of the Public Services Department. 
He is originally from Starkville and is a graduate of Starkville High School. He attended Mississippi State University where he studied kinesiology. Before joining the city of Starkville, Robert worked as a store manager for By the Yard. Robert is the proud father of one son, Marshall Tomlinson. He is a member of Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church. In his spare time, he enjoys hunting and fishing and playing around with the computer. Please join me in welcoming Robert Tomlinson. It is now my pleasure to introduce our four newest police officers. I'd first like to introduce Stephanie Johnson. She is originally from Webster County and is a graduate of French Camp Academy. She also attended Itawamba Community College. Before becoming a police officer, Stephanie spent three years as a dispatcher with the Starkville Police Department. Stephanie is the proud mother of two daughters, Ira and Morgan. She enjoys running and writing poetry and spending time with her family. Stephanie and her family attend Bethel Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie. I'd now like to introduce Jace Dawsey. Jace is from Picayune, Mississippi and attended Picayune High School. He attended Pearl River Community College where he majored in criminal justice. Jace worked as a firefighter at uh, Lamar County Fire before joining the Starkville Police Department. Jace is the son of Brian Dawsey and Tracy Park. He enjoys working out, playing all, all sports, and learning more about law enforcement. He also enjoys hanging out with his Belgian Malinois dukes. Please join me in welcoming Jace. Did I get the name of that breed right? Malawa. Malawa. Close enough. Never heard of it before. <laughs> I'd now like to introduce Brandon Hernandez. Brandon is originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but grew up in Starkville, Mississippi, and graduated from Starkville Academy. Prior to joining the city of Starkville, Brandon worked at Aurora, Aurora Flight Sciences as a composite technician. Brandon is married to fellow police officer Gabrielle Hernandez, and they have three children, Stormy, Era, and Kate. He enjoys spending time with his family as well as fishing and woodworking. Brandon is also the owner of three pets, a dog named Roxy, two cats, Fry, and Finn. Please join me in welcoming Brandon. Now I'd like to introduce Pedro Yera Jr. from Upton, Massachusetts. He attended Blackstone Valley Tech High School and is a graduate of Massachusetts Bay Community College with an associate's degree in criminal justice. Previously, Pedro worked as a detention officer for the Octavio County Sheriff's Office. In his spare time, he enjoys cooking, sports, mixed martial arts, as well as spending time with his girlfriend, Lisa Quinn. Pedro is the owner of a chihuahua named Lisa Quinn and a cat <laughs> named Harry Yera. Please join me in welcoming Pedro. And that concludes my comments. Thank you all. That concludes my comments for the evening. Uh, do we have any comments from the members of the board? Alderman Sistro. I, um, I, I'm always glad to see people here at our meetings. It's, it's encouraging to see people come out. But I, I do see a couple of faces that I think might be here because of the uh, several issues related to First Baptist Church. And since those have been delayed, um, I, we, we welcome you to stay, but I uh, want you to be aware that those aren't being taken up tonight. And I'll let um, 
our city attorney talk about why we're not taking those up tonight if, if uh, to give a little more information. Attorney Latimer, would you like to explain the issues uh, associated with the uh, uh, planning and zoning matters for this evening? Sure. There's an appeal deadline that has not yet run from an appeal of the Board of Adjustment and Appeals decision last week, and so we couldn't go forward tonight without that 10-day appeal deadline running. And secondly, we needed to ensure public notice of the appeal of the Planning and Zoning Commission's decision relating to this project. And I, I believe that um, we've made efforts to let um, people involved at the church know that this wouldn't be on the agenda tonight, and the church email went, went out. So we're glad to have y'all. Um, good to see everybody. Any further comments from the members of the board? Do we have any further comments from the members of the board? I've got a question just while we, about your comment on the, uh, the demolition. How does that fall with the... Uh, appeal process we're currently in and we can't do start any construction until that process is complete or is that right you'll remember that the uh, demolition uh, was an aspect of the project that the uh, board decided to go forward on uh, on January 2nd uh, and that was uh, uh, what you chose to do in that situation uh, and I'm speaking to you as a board as a whole uh, is you chose to take uh, up to a hundred thousand uh, dollars from the money you had set aside to make the first payment on the facility this year uh, to go ahead and do the demolition uh, project uh, so the demolition project goes forward the construction project uh, will, will not be able to go forward until the uh, motion to reconsider uh, has been taken up by the supreme court uh, and the validation uh, uh, is complete of the certificates of participation so they can be sold uh, to finance the project okay. further comments by the members of the board any further comments by the members of the board any further comments Seeing none, we'll now move to citizen comments. At this time, any citizen wishing to make comments may do so by coming forward, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Good evening to the mayor and board. My name is Adam Turner, Ward 7. Uh, I want to apologize for the last meeting. I, uh, I, I did not uh, recognize the vice mayor and our Vaughn, but uh, Mr. Turner. September the 10th, you know, hidden run and everything kind of had me kind of off balance. Um, <clears throat> the citizen has a few concerns. Our uh, friends from being um, uh, on Jefferson Street, before you put the street back together, you can put the sidewalk there. Uh, they're very much needed. Uh, the citizen also feel like that uh, maybe our voice will be counted. Now, um, the citizen also, uh, the January light bill told a lot of people off because it was late and uh, we didn't know what went wrong with the January light bill. But I uh, hope it didn't nobody get cut off. We, but I we was are uh, concerned about it being late. Uh, Latin, we hope that we don't sell our soul to the devil and we don't um, make a deal with the devil. Uh, we we uh, we had some disappointments. Uh, alcohol on Sunday, uh, um, and not giving carbon drive the proper respect. It's so all that that will weigh in very deeply with every bond. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Further citizen comments? Can I sit down? You may. I'm Dora Herring, and uh, I just uh, realized that I just wanted to make a couple of comments. I recognize my time there. Uh, all of you, Alderman, are full-time workers somewhere. Your services in Alderman is an overload. We've not had a planner lately. Lynn's plate, three or four plates, are full, and she juggles them every day. And considering 
uh, that we did not really have people there to do uh, an analysis of First Baptist projects, which are very complicated and many. I felt that my role might be to try to analyze all of the uh, issues and circumstances involved in that. I mailed each one of you some, some three pages of that. Uh, also put some in the packet and some in your mailbox. Each time it was something else I thought of. It was not intended to be redundant. If you felt I've inundated you with a lot of redundancy, please forgive me. Uh, I really request that you read all that because I think you do not get that kind of detail and analysis. And I've tried to stick to the issues and to the uh, circumstances involved in this. Although, knowing that you would recognize my bias, I'm a commissioner uh, in zoning, as you know, but I recuse myself from this. I'm too close to the project. I would ask uh, that you read all this and seriously consider it as you decide what you want to do at the next meeting when this will be considered. And I especially ask that you remember this transact lot that we're dealing with is not in the corridor. It would not have been transacted, I don't believe. It had been for unusual circumstances which I've described in that analysis. We do have uh, uh, conditions in our transact ordinance for deviations and variances and feel that we meet those conditions. So we feel we have followed the ordinance in spite of the fact that it shouldn't have been transacted to start with. You can't see that plot from the card. You, it will never be compared to anything else in the card. And so it's unusual circumstances that we ask you to look at about this. We, it is a hardship for us not to get the variances. Other than that, we meet the transact requirement. This, uh, I, taken as a whole, all of these projects are very interrelated. The north, south, east, west descriptions in the thing are not correct in view of everything else being taken. To the north of this, if all the requests are approved, to the north of this will be T5 where the sanctuary is. To the west will be R2, Washington Street Residences. To the east will be C2, which is a building that church owned, used by Christian Women Job Corps and a vacant lot, and to the south will be a B1. So it is not nestled in between T5 areas as was indicated because it, it was part of some big project. So I just ask you to read all this if you will and try to consider all of the issues involved as you decide how you might vote. We are happy to, uh, I, I don't know of any other analysis that you're going to receive. So just read what you already have, if you will. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Ms. Herring. Thank you. Ms. Herring, which ward do you reside in? Is it three? Thank you, Martin. <coughs> what, Martin. Which ward do you reside in? One. 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 <coughs> just needed it for the record. My name is Terry Jones. And, uh, I too am a member of First Baptist Church and the chairman of the building committee. I just wanted uh, just to say a few words about. We appreciate your support of what we've <coughs> done. Uh, Lynn's helped us out a lot on, on different uh, aspects of this. We've been working on this project since September the 19th when we brought it first to the city. So uh, our goal was to, to go ahead and, and start the have the presentation to the city and then complete our uh, plan for the building <coughs> and uh, then go through the bid process and on church approval go through the building process. Well, this has got delayed uh, quite a bit. We had planned on start building in spring of this year. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen because we don't have, we have stopped the architects on the plans prior more. So now we, we know we're delayed uh, six to eight months in this project, which could catch us into the weather. And so I'd just like for your consideration uh, when it comes before us next, uh, next uh, board meeting and, uh, and to say that we have a lot of written material 
Our committee has worked on this uh, over a year. I'd love to sit down with anyone to talk about it. If you just call me, call the church office and, and get, uh, get them to me, whatever, or our pastor, we'd be glad to show you what we have, uh, what our total project looks like. I think it'd be very beautiful to the city to, to have this project, and it's very meaningful to our church to, to, for this project to go on. So we just appreciate y'all's help and, and certainly appreciate your vote next week, uh, next week, uh, next week. Thank Thanks. you, Mr. Jones. <coughs> M Mr. Jones, still what, in what Terry, ward are you residing? Terry, in? you're still in three, sir. Still in three. Ward three, three. yeah, ward three. Yeah. <coughs> further citizen comments. Do we have any further citizen comments? Seeing none, we'll move to public appearances, and we have one public appearance scheduled tonight, and that is by Laurie Burton and John Turner uh, on the Cotton District Arts Fair. <coughs> So you'll have 10 minutes. 10 <clears throat> minutes. All right. I don't think you all want us to read this verbatim. So we're asking for uh, your support as you've given us in the past for the uh, Cotton District Arts Festival. Uh, of course, this is the big festival that, that we hold in the city in the uh, Cotton District uh, with food vendors and artisan vendors from all over the state and all over the southeast. Uh, I think you've seen the facts and figures here. If there's really anything we need to pitch you on, uh, got questions you want to ask I'm not going to waste this council's time going over what we've done I think y'all all are aware of what the what this brings <coughs> to the city and we'd ask you to uh, support us again going forward in 2013 mr. Turner this uh, we've um, with the consent agenda we approved your item so we're uh, um, you're you're already approved I do want to thank you though that we really appreciate what the cotton district arts festival does every year it's a great event and um, look forward to it well, we appreciate the city's support and hope to see all y'all out there in, on April 20th. It's Good. astounding what it's grown into. It's yeah, really we're, we're proud of them. We hope this year is, is better than ever. So thank you all for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next matter before you is our first public hearing on amending the official municipal street map and street index in accordance with Mississippi Code section 657-143. I'm going to do something a little unconventional. Chris, would, would, would you like to introduce this matter just from the standpoint of legally how we got here? Sure. Uh, there are two statutes that control city streets. One is Mississippi Code 21-37-3 which says the city has full jurisdiction over its streets. And the other is 657-143. And what that statute says is that any time a street name gets amended or any time a revision takes place to the official city street map or any time an official city street map gets adopted, it has to be done so by ordinance. And so this is all this is, is an attempt to comply with those statutes and to come forward with an ordinance that officially designates the city street map. Can I ask a question? You so would we each and every time throughout the future when a, a street gets requested to be renamed, we write another ordinance or just amend this one? How does that work? We could probably amend this one. It does have to be by ordinance. It's just a statutory requirement. And so to the extent that renaming officially changes the map and it's not just a ceremonial designation, then it has to be done by ordinance. Okay. Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? And does, does that apply to naming <coughs> streets too, new streets? If it affects the map. The map's okay. the key. If the official map changes, the ordinance requirement is triggered. Okay. So even if it's a new subdivision, it affects the map. And I'd like to say too that the there was a slight change. The ordinance at your table is slightly different from the one that was in the packet originally. The one that was in the packet had an additional paragraph about the renaming of Needmore Street, which we had taken off at the previous agenda on the, at the previous meeting. And so uh, the pack, the excuse me, the ordinance at your table reflects that. Further questions or comments from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Seeing none, we'll move to the public comment portion of the public hearing. 
and uh, we'll do that by hearing uh, for speakers for and against the ordinance in alternating <coughs> fashion. Uh, each speaker will have a maximum of three minutes. Each side will have a cumulative total of 15 minutes. Uh, we will go through the process of alternating hearing from speakers for and against uh, until either no one wishes to speak or both sides have exhausted their 15 minutes. Uh, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Good evening, my name is Alvin Tunnel Ward. We make ordinance, but do we realize the stress that we put on the police officer, the firefighter? The ambulance, or uh, when we call 911, it, it, it hurt us that our, uh, we can't see the police officer, we can't see the fire truck, and it could be a life and death. Uh, when we make ordinance, do we take that under consideration? Because we, we, if a fight break out, we don't want the police cannot find the street. I know. If a fire get the barn, we don't want the fire truck in that fire in the street. Uh, they don't change the name. All right, take uh, the people that protect us on a day-to-day -day basis. Take their stress of trying to find what they need to find when they need to find. Uh, 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 how do you tie that into 911 that somebody know how to find somebody when trouble happens? Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone now wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak for, or against, or indifferent to the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one will close the public comment portion of the public hearing and we'll hear any final comments from the members of the board. Alderman Carver. Other than need more place, are there any other changes on the map? Street name? No. Okay. Well, and to be clear on that, that, that won't be an official street name. That's just a district name. That um, the board approved at the February 15th. Ceremonial. Yeah. Name. But now to be, I, are, are we sure about that in that, in that past? road name changes will not be, this won't retroactively go back and correct the um, well, Pat Station Garrett Road, for example. Well, technically, none okay. of these roads have been named <coughs> by ordinance. Uh, so technically, it changes every road in right. the city. But Officially. It, it is naming everything what it is already named right. is the answer to your question. <coughs> Any further comments by the members of the board? I guess in a good example, the, the Reed Road, Garrett Road, that's what was adopted last year with all just right. that's that's in as the board's previously adopted just may, may, may ask a question you may Mr. Floyd, just make it real <clears throat> simple elementary the ordinance that's before us tonight uh, for a public hearing is going to take care of all the streets that have been renamed correct yes sir thank you very much named or, named, named or renamed right. any further comments from the members of the board any further comments any further comments? <laughs> Seeing none, we will now move to the first public hearing on amending the landscape ordinance. Alderman Dumas, would you like to introduce? Sure. Um, this process has been a, um, a long, well thought out process by several that are in the, in the audience tonight. Brian Templeton will be giving us our, uh, our presentation tonight on what this ordinance and how the changes, what the changes are. But, but this really stemmed from Ben Griffith asking the tree board and the tree committee um, for help. There, there were issues that he had with the antiquated ordinance, the way it was written, um, from things that range from plant material all the way to um, um, these, these issues and these, these details in a policy needing to be something that could be better understood and applied from a layman's term and, and our building department. And so luckily we had, we had a committee in place that, that really took this on as a, um, um, I don't want to say challenge, but, but really took it on and did a great job with what's, what's happened here. And so we're very fortunate to have 
Brian Templeton, who's a landscape architect and a certified arborist who has, has really spearheaded this effort with Bob Bruzak, with Jonathan Henry, with Four County, who's an arborist, Steve Grado, and I get everybody, I think that's everybody on the committee, right? And several others that have been a part of it, but they've been instrumental in putting this thing together. And so I think you'll, you'll appreciate the depth by which they've put uh, in this ordinance and making it applicable and something that's usable for the city. So, Brian, do you want to? Uh, Jonathan Howell. Howell. I'm sorry, Jonathan Howell. Just for clarification. I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, so uh, what we have today um, is a little presentation that we're going to look at the major differences between the ordinance. This doesn't encompass everything. That's all written out in the ordinance. Just trying to touch on the high points and stake, make the case for uh, why we even embarked on this endeavor. <coughs> So first off, the ordinance does not apply to single family residences, utilities, or uh, anything that deals with an emergency. Those are all exempted from the ordinance. Um, and each development or redevelopment will be reviewed individually as is currently the case to my knowledge. Um, so this is one example of parking in Starkville. Um, everybody's probably familiar with this area. The, look at that, yeah. the major areas in here, these were, this is some of the some of the types of situations we're trying to revise. Uh, this is another area in Starkville that was built under our current landscape ordinance. Um, so the biggest issue for us being the tree board is that there are very few, if any, trees in this entire expanse of, of pavement. Um, ground level view, that's, that's actually not our store, but it's similar to what you would see if you were in a similar location. Um, so, this type, this is something that's a little bit closer to what we're proposing. You notice there's still a lot of parking, but there's more trees in the space. So that's really what we're looking for. And one of the other things that, that we talk about is trying to improve the conditions that the trees are planted in. We feel like the existing ordinance um, has subpar standards for um, allowing the trees to grow properly. And, and if you notice a lot of the trees in our parking lots and in um, uh, areas where they have sidewalks or hardscape nearby, the trees aren't growing very tall. It's because they don't have a lot of space to grow when they're roots. And when the trees can't grow when they're roots, they can't grow at the top. Um, so this is a little bit more of what we, what we think our proposal is going to, to give us as opposed to what we had. So a, as um, Alderman Dumas said, this was initiated by uh, former city planner Ben Griffith. The stated goals were to bring the ordinance up to date, uh, to coordinate and supplement with new ordinances, mainly the new sediment erosion control, new sidewalks, new smart codes or smart growth, and the new stormwater ordinance, um, to reflect the needs of the city and its citizens, and to refine and improve the permitting process for the city and therefore the applicants. And that was really Ben's real driving factor was the, the permitting process was, wasn't working as smoothly as he thought it could. Uh, so the, the ordinance, this ordinance has the same basic goals and premises, and, and that's why we're saying it's a revision and not a brand new ordinance, even though um, most of the, the wording would be changed. Uh, it's based on current research and best management practices. New uses in the city provides more flexibility and guidance in meeting these requirements. Um, it, it's set up to help protect property values better by improving screens and buffers, and uh, to, again, to help improve the review process. So we looked at trying to increase tree canopy coverage, to increase the amount of screening and the quality, more importantly, the quality than the quantity of screening, um, improve vegetation health, as I just mentioned, and obviously the health and the safety of the citizens is of utmost concern. Um, so these are some of the, some of the, the major differences to, to try and draw out uh, differences between the existing <coughs> uh, ordinance and the proposed ordinance. Um, so in some cases, the uh, the, um, in this case, when we're referring to buffer areas, which would buffer different uses or different zones uh, of, of property, um, in some cases, the, the zoning area, the buffer strip is actually going to decrease in size. And in one case, which would be the most conflicting use case, it would actually increase in size. Um, so here on the left, we have an image of what would be the um, least required you would need. So this would be in the, in the most compatible uses that, are, that require a buffer yard. So here you would have 
a 10 foot buffer and there are 40 plant units. The plant units, uh, there's a chart that shows the plant units different. This would be the most uh, involved or the, uh, the most required that you would plant, which would be 160 plant units and the 40 foot buffer. They don't have to look exactly like this. These are just examples of what it might look like to show that you can get this amount of plants or this amount of plant units within the space that we're asking for. And let me just add something right there to give a real world example of what this is. Um, one of the issues, the bigger issues that I've had to deal with uh, in Ward 5 is, is the challenge of, of the parking deck with the hospital and how it's encroached with plantation homes. And so the current landscape ordinance just gave a general statement that said if you don't have compatible uses, your buffer needs to be um, 15, 20 feet wide with a six foot uh, opaque screen. Well, you put that within 20 feet of a four story parking deck and your buffer is of no use. Um, and, so, and so now we have these incredible challenges with light pollution, with view shed pollution, other types of things with that parking deck within this <coughs> well established neighborhood that these types, of, these types of changes will help combat. So in those non-compatible uses, it would help to alleviate those, those issues with, from the landscape buffer standpoint. Um, so specifications for required plant material, and again, these are, these are what I'm showing from existing is the things that would be different from what we haven't proposed. This isn't all that's included in the existing ordinance. I'm just trying to pull out the differences here. So this only applies to plant material that is required by the proposed ordinance. So if someone goes above and beyond and they plant more than is required, these requirements would not um, apply to the extra planting. Um, so the existing, existing ordinance just says plants that are adaptable to climate conditions of this area. Uh, the proposed one would rely on industry st standards which are established by ANSI, that's a, a federal body. Um, it encourages native and drought tolerant species. It has minimum install sizes, which is going to help with the screening and the buffering <coughs> uses. And it prohibits plants deemed a nuisance by USDA and state agencies. Um, this fact right here is one of the main reasons we think that that's very necessary. Octaba County is the, uh, has the most reports of invasive species in the state of Mississippi. Um, I prefer we're not number one on that list anymore. Um, so, uh, right of way and sidewalks, the uh, old ordinance, or the existing ordinance, excuse me, um, suggests that you can plant in the right of way, but provides uh, no, um, the city is not going to protect that plant material if it needs the right of way. And um, it specifies that you cannot obstruct visibility of vehicles. The proposed ordinance expands on that, provides better guidance as to how to avoid um, obstructing the visibility so that it's, very, it's enumerated and it's very specific what you need to do in that situation. And this was one of the kind of sticking points that uh, former city planner Griffin had, had said he was having problems with because it wasn't straightforward what needed to be done. So this is what we've, we're suggesting. Um, site triangle intersections, I believe the existing ordinance is 20 feet from, from the corner in each direction, so we would push it out to 30 feet. Um, and we suggest above sidewalks it would be clear between three feet and eight feet. I'm sorry, that's not sidewalks. That's in the, um, in the uh, site triangle. And then a 14-foot clearance over all roads, fire lanes, and access ways, and an eight-foot clearance over sidewalks. Let me ask a question while we're on this. Sure. Thing. You're talking about a clearance over road being 14 feet. Which yes, sir. Is, if you've got a minimum, you know, insulation height of 12 feet, how do you do when the trees are growing? How do you, I mean, how do you plan for that just to give the clearance off the road enough that when the canopy starts it exactly so so part of the minimum install height means that the tree has to be large enough that we can create uh, six feet of clearance I believe between the the grade and the crown and the bottom of the crown of the tree but the the, the real I think what you're saying is it, the tree's not actually going to grow wide enough until it's tall enough that we can raise the crown even higher and so the real issue for the 14 feet is for emergency vehicle clearance. The fire trucks, the ambulances, delivery trucks, usually those are all below 14 feet. I don't believe the fire chief is here, is he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, is your ladder truck's been below 14 feet, right? Oh, yeah. That, so that gives you plenty of clearance. So that, that was really why that, that 14 feet is there. Does that address your question? Yeah, it does. And what was the clear between 3 and 8 feet? That's for the site triangle. 
And so what that means is if you pull up to a stop sign or, any, or even your driveway, when you're trying to enter a road or if you're in a road and you want to enter another road, there's what we call the sight triangle. And I'm sorry, I should have put a, I forgot to put the, uh, the visual of this in here. Um, but it's basically a, a triangle that says you can't plant in this area or if you do, the plant material can't be above three feet tall and can't be below eight feet tall. So there is, it allows for some planting in that space, but it keeps that sight triangle clear for drivers and for pedestrians so that they can see the potential, um, the potential conflict that might happen from oncoming traffic. Okay. Can, can, you, can you explain that one more time about? Sure. So the canopy can't, it doesn't start until? Right, so, um, so if you, you plant a tree uh -huh. in, um, in, in the minimum, <clears throat> the minimum install, there's a certain size, it's not a height, but it's a certain diameter of the tree, which is the way trees are usually measured in the trade. Um, so that's gonna give it a certain amount of height just to be that, that large, it's gonna be that tall. And so there will be a, a clearing uh, or, or, or raised crown so that the, the branches aren't gonna be low enough to be in anyone's way so you can see through them or, or walk under them if that's the case. Um, are you talking about the side triangle? No, I'm talking about the, I mean, that's a pretty big tree to already have an eight foot. But it won't, that's, that's what we're, it's not going to have an eight foot when it gets, when it gets planted. Okay. Um, and, and that, there will be allowances for trees to be there, but usually you don't plant trees in the, tr in the site triangle. Right. Because the trunk is going to be in the way, we do have allowances for that in this ordinance, <coughs> but it also requires that you're not obstructing um, obvious sight lines f that could be a, a a danger. Yeah, I, I agree with the site triangle. It should be it should be clear and it should be it, it right. And so so I the the question is is how are you going to plant a tree that gives you enough clearance? Is that your question? No, I just I was just go, go, you can go ahead. I, I think it'll come up a little bit later. Go ahead. Okay. We, if I don't touch on it, I, okay. I'll be happy to to get over it. Um, so uh, a little bit of installation and maintenance. Again, this only applies to plants <coughs> that meet the requirements. Uh, existing says if a plant dies, you have 60 days to remove it and 90 days to replace it. And this is to meet the requirement usually for screening. The reason you have to replace them is because we've required you to plant a screen to begin with. If you aren't uh, forced to replace it, what's the point of having the screen to begin with? Um, so in, in the proposed, we'd say 30 days to restore, which means removing the dead and replacing a new one. Um, so it, it greatly shortens that window when that screen might not be there. Um, uh, for plant maintenance, it relies on industry standards, and it removes this tree staking requirement, which is uh, a burden on, on installation both in labor and cost. Um, and it's, it's not been, tree staking has not been uh, proven by research to be effective. Really? Unless the trees, I mean, if trees haven't, I don't want to get into it too much, but if, tr if trees fall down, yes, stake them. But the research shows that they grow much better if you don't stake them to begin with unless they absolutely need it. Basically, the stakes make the tree weaker because they help support the tree so the tree doesn't grow as strong if the stakes are there. Um, perimeter parking, uh, these are kind of some of the main changes. I don't really want to hit on all of these. Um, but uh, basically, we would I increase the amount of trees and shrubs that need to be planted in the perimeter parking area and um, around the perimeter. They don't always, the trees don't necessarily have to go in the space that they're required by, <coughs> especially in interior parking. It just means they have to go on the lot somewhere. So this is just a diagram to show uh, the different areas. Interior parking is this slash line. This is the perimeter parking on the edge. This would be hardscape in a building. It's obviously your parking lot. The NVOS is the non-vehicular open space. That's basically any place that doesn't have a building and doesn't have parking or driveways on it or any place that a car could, could move through. Um, and then this area here would be the buffer yard in this case. Um, front setback. Um, so we're again, we're increasing the amount of trees that are required in the front setback. This is basically to increase the uh, street trees in town. One of the things that we did with this, though, was especially if you have a small site that's between zero and two acres, you only need 10 plant units per 100 linear feet. You'll notice down here at the bottom, a canopy tree is worth 10 points. So all you have to do is plant three trees within that 100, square, that 100 linear feet. 
and you've already met your requirement unless you're over two acres. So we, in, in this case, we would actually be reducing the amount of planting that's required in the um, front, front setback. Um, but we'd be increasing the required amount of trees, which was more of what we thought would be a, a good goal for the city. Do, do that same analogy in the five acres, five or more. I mean, what, what kind of cost are we talking about the property? To well, it, that's, part of this is to allow more flexibility in meeting that. So if you have a good source that can get you canopy trees cheaply, you can meet your requirement much easier through that. If you don't have a good source that can do trees or you don't really have the space to plant trees because of overhead utilities, your building or whatever it is, then there's, there's the opportunity to plant shrubs. And that's why we went with the plant units as opposed to saying you have to have so and so many trees, you have to have so many shrubs. <clears throat> We're trying to allow flexibility and just provide the guidelines for how you achieve the requirements that we're requesting. So it, that's really what we're trying to do is, is increase flexibility for the people to meet these requirements. I know that's not exactly answering, but I don't think I can give you an exact answer. No, that's fine. I mean, I was just getting into the point system and things like that. Besides shrubs, you've got any kind of perennials? I mean, how does that? No, the, the, the perennials and annuals wouldn't count towards a plant unit because they're not um, really permanent plants, especially the annuals. Um, perennials don't really provide much back in a, on a community-wide basis. They provide aesthetic value for a site, for a local site, but they don't really give anything back to the community at large. So that's why we didn't assign them a point value. And typically, um, with the landscape ordinances that we looked at and we're, we're familiar with and we researched, none of them offer uh, point values for perennials or annuals. Really? I'm not saying they don't. The ones we saw didn't. There, um, there might be some out there that do. It was not an exhaustive search. Um, so this is an example of uh, front, front setback. Again, the image on the left is the simplest requirement to meet. The image on the right would be um, one attempt to meet the most restrictive requirement. So that's one way, Ben, that you could meet your meet the requirement for the five acre lot or larger. And so it's again, it's just an example of how you can do it and the amount of space it takes and how much space it could take up. So it is there's a lot of still leftover empty space in that in that front setback that's been set. Um, and I think the key there, when you're talking about a five acre parcel, you're talking about a commercial development that is equal to or larger than the Lowe's Kroger type of, of development and and those are your most intensive uses that do need the most type of screening activity and have the most room for that screening to, exactly. to of yes. course happen. So, right. You know these aren't things that are happening on your 50 foot, 100 foot parcel basis. These are things happening on five, five six hundred, five bigger. you know, linear feet of road frontage type parcels. Exactly. And that's only for the that particular part is only for the road frontage, front set, that front road setback. Um, the composite site is how it was referred to in the existing ordinance. The NVOS is the term we use, the non-vehicular open space. Basically, this is just um, requires that you plant trees. So we take out, we've taken out the requirement that part of your site be landscaped however you want to do it. Um, we're adding that trees have to be involved, but you don't have to add any other plant material. Again, it's another example of where the MVOS space might be. Um, the existing ordinance gives uh, gives credit for existing trees, but the they it allows for substandard preservation practices. Um, in in my opinion, most of the preservation practices are not actually going to preserve the trees. Um, so that's why we've upped that. We'll, we're still uh, opting to give credit for existing trees that are preserved or existing vegetation even, not just trees, as long as it's preserved using industry standard practices which are established by ANSI as well. Um, the existing uh, landscape ordinance has no mention of irrigation. This plan, uh, this ordinance, the proposed ordinance requires an irrigation plan. On, every, on everything? If, if they're going to install irrigation, we require a plan. Mostly that is so that we know the source of that irrigation, so it's not pulling from city water, and so that we know if a well is going to be dug for irrigation. They would all have to pull from city water, would they not? 
well, they could dig a well. In the past, they have dug wells, and that's been part of the problem was there was no permit, there was no oversight as to how the wells were done. This is all according to, to former planner Griffin. So, but, I mean, but it requires everybody to have an No, irrigation. I'm sorry, that, it does not. Okay. It, that that is you, what it states. If but you have irrigation. If you, have your, you, have if you are going plan. to install irrigation, we have, have to have, have a plan. plan. Okay. Sorry, yeah, that was, that was misworded. And that's, that covers the majority of it, it covers the presentation questions. Alderman Carver. The two I've got written, first of all, thank you for doing this. Um, that's a lot of work, and, and you're saying go back and check industry standards of, for subpar vegetation. Excuse my terminology. I'm no, that's okay. So is, who's, who's going to be ultimately responsible for all this work? I mean, the community development director or city planner? To, to check? You mean who, to, to review job the plans? Be, yeah. yeah, so this, um, one of the things that this ordinance does is, is set up a subcommittee of the Tree Advisory Board that would work as a, a review body. So the, the initial review is going to happen by the Development Review Committee or whoever reviews the, I'm sorry, the, the terminology, has, terminology has changed a lot recently. It's hard for me to, to keep up, but it's the Community Planning Director, yeah. Community PRC Development PRC. Director. Well, let me, let me add let me add a little there. Uh, the the whole I know one of big one of Ben's biggest pushes with this was to to help develop an ordinance that was easier for him to um, apply because the old ordinance had the language, but it had no real examples from a graphic perspective. Mm -hmm. It had a uh, very old. Uh, plant list associated with it that I don't even know was official. I know that he had a plant list that he was working from, but I don't those think were the substandard tree species. So, for instance, it gave it gave credit for Bradford pears, which we know are detrimental in a in a landscape uh, scenario where they can, um, you know, the limbs can ice over uh, other type things that are that are issues that are there. We had no real standards for utility issues, and that's where Jonathan Howell from Four County really comes in to really help with this. You know, so. The whole goal with this ordinance was, and, and I think frankly one of the bigger things we've been working on or y'all been working on for the last six, eight months is developing a very intensive appendix that goes with this that is a true user manual for whoever will be doing this. That is a complete list of accepted trees in this climate that are, are real quality trees for this area. Um, the non-invasive type species, the ones that reflect our climate but also the, the graphical representation that can be used for examples of, um, so as the issues come in, as the projects come in, we can use that as a, as a development practice. Now, from the hearing standpoint, it's set up currently just like our stormwater review board, mm -hmm. uh, or it's being proposed. That's to. the proposed. <clears throat> and so what would happen if, if the project came in, was being, and, and met all the standards of the ordinance, it would just go through development review committee approval. It would be an administrative review uh, review process, and it would it would go um, and be and be implemented as is. Mm -hmm. Any type of appeal from that would go to the tree board to be heard, so that they can look at it from the professional standpoint to, to be able to do whatever they um, you know would would deem appropriate at that point. And that would be <coughs> it will set up ideal or, or um, exactly like the stormwater review board. So. So, and to address your question about industry standards, those those are accepted. Those should be practiced by everyone who's a professional landscape contractor in not just in Starkville but in the state of Mississippi and in the country. Um, so it's not so much that someone has to go and check those. It's more so if someone has a complaint, then we have a standard to judge it by, so that there's something to say. You know, here this is listed. This was the standard. You did not follow it. You mi you missed this point. This is this is the issue. Please correct it. Or does that make yeah. a little bit more sense? Yeah, I'm just had throwing it out there. My second question sure. was, um, and this may not apply to you, but how does this or does this address maintenance of property within the city of Starkville? Um, you know, even I, I ride around a good bit, and you see sometimes the properties aren't maintained, so they may fall within this. How, does, does this help to address? the ongoing property maintenance issues we might have as a city? Um, I think probably yes and no. Um, it definitely addresses maintenance. Maintenance should should happen according to those ANSI standards. Um, it, it does not, I don't think, change the, 
like whether you can, I'm, I'm, I guess if someone is not maintaining their property is what you're asking. The main is. thing is if a plant's done or something that needs to be replaced, then right. they so, will come in. So it only addresses what's required by the ordinance. So it, it, for, first off, it's not going to address any residential, single family residential use. So that won't be an issue where we don't want to, we don't feel like that's the right place to, right. to do this. Um, but in, uh, so say, um, Say Target comes to start, right? And this this ordinance has been passed. <laughs> Sorry, we, it was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> I, I have no. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> I have no knowledge of Target coming, nor do I care if they come or not. Um, so tar Target comes, we tell them they have to plant. Um, according to this ordinance, which is passed, they have to plant the front strip that we talked about. Two of the trees that they plant out of the say twenty die. Within 30 days, they have to replace those plants. At 30 days after notice from the city, they have to replace those plants or provide some some uh, proof that they're in the process of. But Ben, I think to get to your plants, the the issue that I feel that we share, it won't deal with Is it people not cutting grass, issues? people not this no people. So this with, is, with most ordinances that we create things grandfathered in so I guess that's going to say that if stuff's grandfathered in and, yeah, everything's and half the property is dead right now can we go right. in and no this only addresses development and redevelopment new construction type stuff so go ahead. I, I was going to say what I'm taking away from all of this is that we have a an ordinance in place now it's, it's a bit cumbersome and what we're trying to do is make it a little more user friendly and streamline the process for, for developers, so yes, we're trying to make it a little a little more usable, a yes, lot more usable actually. Those, we're, those were definitely two of our major goals. Yes, how would it affect? Like right now, it doesn't our landscape ordinance doesn't apply to R1, R2, or R3. That's correct. Uh, how would it? How would it affect? I might, it? it might apply to R. Uh, but anyway, it does not apply to R1. A new, a new development, like a new residential development. How would it affect? Um, if it is a single family <laughs> residence, it would not apply. If it is part of a subdivision, and that, and that's what I'm it, it, so this would apply to that. So um, where does he plan? I mean, where is he planning? His so again, you, we would be looking at at buffers yeah. between. So we, we're not talking about individual houses within the subdivision. Right, I understand. That. It would apply to buffers and the front front yard setback, and more importantly for that type of development, the NVOS planting. So it would require tree planting or tree preservation. So if instead, say, someone has a large plot that they want to build a, a neighborhood development in, they're either going to have to save a few trees when they clear cut or plant some trees to replace what they took out. And it would all depend on the acreage of the, of the development. Further questions or comments from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Just a mail read for a break. I want to thank y'all, Brian. This All right, we need to hear the citizen comments first. Uh, I'll tell you what, we need to hear the citizen comments, and then we've, we've just got a couple of things. So uh, let's, let's push through and try to get to the executive session, then we'll take a break. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Templeton. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. At this time, thank we'll hear all. citizen comments, uh, or we'll hear public comments uh, in the same fashion that I outlined before. I, I will spare you uh, the explanation of, of how we do that again, only to say we'll now hear uh, anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance. Mr. Burnham. I'm not a Burnham Ward. I don't know whether I'm in favor or opposed. I, I read the old ordinance. I haven't read the new one. But I've got a question. The city is now looking forward to putting up a four-story parking ramp uh, if that development goes through, right? And I have not heard anything as to uh, how, the plannings that, uh, that will be forced upon those people as they will now be forced upon an individual who puts out a flat parking lot around a, uh, an area that, uh, a business area. I mean, you know, that doesn't seem to have been addressed in this. The second comment I have has to do with the fact of the plant material list, I haven't looked at them, but I, I get concerned about uh, who's keeping track of what's being planted where, because I think right now, uh, we, we heard the comment about Bradford pears and flowering pears and the problems associated there. We're now seeing the fact that we're getting an awful lot of plantings of red maples. And that's just, you know, they're going everywhere. Not only are they going into business areas and city streets and, and, and that type of thing, everybody in town is planting them now that they've been pushed much as the flowering pears have been pushed. 
and we run into the fact of having every planting looking like every other planting and with the associated problems. And I worry about who's gonna do the bean counting on this thing is to see what's being planted and the numbers that are, uh, that are being put in. But first of all, what about the parking? All right. Now, Mr. Burnham, was your question uh, how would this apply to a parking yeah. uh, deck in general or uh, yeah. specifically to a parking deck uh, being built by the city? Yeah, I, I'm not questioning whether or not a parking deck is going to be built. I want to know how this ordinance addresses parking right. deck. Uh, Alderman Davis, would you like to? I will. The issue there, and, and um, help me out here, uh, the real trigger there is, is the, um, the adjacency in use. So it's not a real... Um, what do you do just from a canned answer to a parking deck, but it's what are the compatibility uses next to it? So is the parking deck adjacent to a, an R2 uh, land use or is it adjacent to an R1 land use? Well, those are the issues that Brian talked about in those, in those graphics that if it's, if it's going from a C2 land use to an R1 land use, you have much greater uh, buffer needs that would be both in width of the buffer and height of the material than you would be if you were going from a C2 where a parking deck is constructed to another C2 parcel. Well, the illustrations that he showed at the beginning had to do with a flat area such as what's in front of Walmart and just a flat paved area with no trees. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how is that, you know, the approach there is to put trees in and that you put in so many trees for so many parking spaces such well I'm looking at a parking deck now where we've got it not flat but where we've got elevation what's being done <coughs> on that you know in some cases they're either underground or they put a uh, you know they, they, they grow on a rooftop right Brian do you want yeah absolutely um, so uh, truthfully we weren't aware or considering another parking garage going in when we did this um, so the way the ordinance works the way it's proposed that would have to be a special case that's addressed <coughs> by the development and that would just have to be handled as a, as a specific special case. Um, I would think one way that you might handle it would be apply the ordinance as if the top deck of the parking lot were the only level. So whatever is required, because we're really looking at impervious surface, which would be hard state, asphalt or concrete or something like that, that's, that's going to send water somewhere else. And so you might apply the requirements that would normally go into that if it was a surface level parking to the NBOS space. Uh, but again, I, I think those are just going to have to be kind of special case issues. I don't think you want to start writing an ordinance that addresses parking garages. I, I think that's getting a little too specific for what we need for Starkville. But again, we never really addressed that when we were writing this ordinance, and, and that is an oversight. Um, to your second question about uh, species density or species diversity, I believe. There, there are stipulations in the ordinance that requires species diversity as part of the planting so that you cannot plant, I believe you can't plant more than 50% of one type of planting can be the same species. So if you're going to plant trees, only 50% of your trees at maximum could be red maples or red pears or whatever. Oh, I apologize for not reading the... No, 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 that's, that's quite all right. It's a lot to read. That's why we're here. I understand. I'll read it before the next is that, is that address You can rest <laughs> assured he will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. Does that address your, your issues? Thank you. All right. Uh, is anyone now wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing? Yeah, yes, my sir. name is Steve Grado. I'm a professor of forestry at Mississippi State. I just want to say that we put a lot of time thought in on emphasizing uh, native species to be planted uh, because of the problems that, that Brian showed you with the non-invasive. And it's not just the fact that we have plants from somewhere else that are here. There's a great cost to them that you may not realize is, you know, even though this doesn't deal with residents, residents are constantly fighting back invasives that shouldn't be there. On a city-wide scale, you have species that escape into the to the um, rural areas that cause a lot of problems for forestry, which is about 10% of this state's economy. And so you've got more time and effort on those types of problems. And we're trying to set a precedent here with the things that this ordinance does apply to, to emphasize the native species. They take less water. 
They don't die as much because they are native species. They don't split apart. They're, they're, they have an aesthetic appeal. And we get caught into these traps, as that gentleman had brought up, that we just go in one direction blindly. And so we're trying to, as Brian said, diversify in this ordinance uh, our thoughts about plants. <coughs> All right, uh, is there anyone now wishing to speak uh, for or against or indifferent to uh, the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak in general? Um, uh, I would like to get to the point of uh, uh, snakes be crawling pretty soon. Uh, uh, a lot of people have a problem with the root of the tree getting out of the apartment and stuff and be getting the sewer line and started having back up. Like what is the best way to handle if you have to kill the tree to save the sewer line and all? Or uh, what would be the best way to handle it? Mr. Templeton, do you care to fill that one? Um, I, I'm not sure I can answer that question specifically, but one thing the new proposed ordinance does do is stipulate that trees must be planted in the right place um, to grow to their mature height. And it also stipulates that they should not be planted over or near utilities. So using the current or the proposed ordinance, hopefully we should not have that problem anymore. Um, as to how to solve that problem, that's a, a different issue that I don't really feel comfortable addressing right now. Any further comments on the ordinance? Any further comments? Any further comments? Seeing none, do we have any concluding comments by the members of the board? Any concluding comments by the members of the board? Seeing none, that will conclude this, our public, first public hearing on the landscape ordinance. And the next matter you have before you is a request for approval of the fire department claims document. Thank we'll give all. Alderman Thank Carver all. a moment Thank to you. exit the room. Move approval. Mo <laughs> Hold on, he's got to exit through. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve of the fire department claims docket as of February 28, 2013, as presented. Alderman Dumas, that's your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, you wish to speak on the merits. I do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. 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 By a vote of four in favor with two against, the measure clearly passes. Could somebody uh, go get Alderman Carver? Do we have to? Go <laughs> get it. The next matter you have before you is right, the no, approval no, no. of the City of Starkville Claims Docket for all departments. Alderman Dumas has made a motion to approve of the Starkville Claims Docket for all departments. Uh, Accept the fire department as of February 28, uh, 2013, as presented. Alderman Dumas, that's your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion's been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, you wish to speak on the merits? I do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. 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 By a vote of five in favor with two against, mm -hmm. this measure passes. Uh, that concludes your open agenda. A motion to go into closed session to determine whether there's a need for an executive session is now in order. So moved. Motion has been, y'all don't go before we get the motion. Uh, motion has been made by Alderman Corey to go to uh, move into closed session to determine whether there's a need for an executive session. Alderman so Corey, is that your motion? It is. Yeah, motion has been seconded by Alderman Perkins. Uh, Alderman uh, Corey, you wish to speak on, did you second? Second on both two, yeah. All right, uh, Alderman McCoy, you were speaking on the mayor. No, thanks. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Magic clearly passes. We're going to closed session. I'm going to move us into a brief recess without objection. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. Moving to brief recess.